Hello everyone, here tonight we've got Ian Hume who will be joining us. Jaden, good to have you with us. So if you all just want to start logging on now, we'll get going. Hello Hilditch, Alex. So I hope you'll all look forward to this. Ian's had a fantastic career, really looking forward to this one. Ex-teammate of mine, Andy Madley. Good interview the other night. Mason Grant, good to have you with us. So if you just request to join you me now, we'll get you on screen. Here we go. Just finished a session now at Academy Kids on Zoom. Yes, mate, how are we doing? All right, well, see, how are you, pal? We haven't aged a bit, have we? Oh, hey. Uh, yeah, I'm good, mate. I look the you? exact same. I've, I've looked old for years. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. No, it's good to see you, pal. Um, mm. oh, how's, you, how's life treating you at the minute, then? Yeah, just is what it is, isn't it? Just yeah. got to get on with things. It's, oh, uh, right, well, what I'll do, mate, is I'll... I'll I'll give you an insight in a, just into what this is all about, and then we'll let you, um, you know, give us your story. So basically, with the Academy at Forza and everybody watching all around, we're doing a series of questions and answers with pros. So obviously, we've had uh, Mark Jackson, ex-pro, uh, current Leeds United uh, cap, uh, captain, current Leeds United youth coach, and we've had Andy Madley on Premier League ref. We've got uh, Ian Hart on Friday, and then Luke Ayling. Why I love your story, which I want you to tell everyone, is uh, young age, uh, found yourself on the Wirral, um, <laughs> which, uh, which is a great story. But also just to give your, your tale and how you got into professional football. Um, it's a tough time for everyone at the minute, but kids need to understand how hard it is in football to get, to get into it um, and the dedication and the time. And you're certainly someone who I, I, you know, was able to play alongside and go, do you know what? want him in my team all day because he works so, so hard. And that's not just when we were at Leicester. That was when we <laughs> used to play play against Tranmere um, in the youth teams and things like that, mate. So um, good to see you. Glad you're all well. So where we started is your academy to pro journey. Um, if you want to just, you know, give give the kids an insight into how you got into football. Um, well, I grew up in Canada, so it was always a, a tough ask anyways, uh, not many Canadians were coming over at the time and if they were they weren't yeah. coming over to the UK um, I obviously was fortunate enough I was born in Scotland so I had yeah. my my ticket there already so I had my my passport and my, my citizenship so the the dreaded work permit problems yeah. that Canadian players have, have come across for years and will continue to come across for years um, I kind of bypassed them and I started coming on trials when I was, what, 13. I went on my first trial with St. Mary. Um, promised the world. Um, they sent, That's football. Sent, <laughs> well, that was it. They, they'd sent scouts over. I'd, at 13 year old, I was training with first team players. and Yeah. Then they sent scouts over to watch me and did well and brought over bags yeah. of gear. And yeah. Then went, they went AWOL. So they stopped answering phone calls, emails, whatever. Um, yeah. So the following year, I'd, I'd planned uh, a three-week trip. I came over with my mum, and yeah. it was a week with Heart of Midlothian, which was my dream, born, born yeah. Hearts fan. Um, right. And then you it was a, a week with, well, <laughs> what, what's going on there is ridiculous at the minute. But um, yeah. then it was a week with Hartlepool, a week with York. But yeah. I, did, I made sure the first week with, was with Hearts, and I did yeah. that, and... I was on fire, to be honest. I was I was playing with their under sixteens, training with their under eighteens. Yeah. Trained with the first team at the time. I was fourteen year old. Yeah. Um, and Jim Jeffries was the manager, and he came in and he'd heard what happened with Saint Mirren. He's like, "Oh, forget them." He goes, "We'll report them to the SFA. Let's get you on board and yeah, cancel your your trials with York and Hartlepool and yeah, and stay here with us." So I spent three weeks with Hearts, and I did really, really well, and beyond what I'd expected. 
Right. And then they did the exact same thing as St. Mary. So this is at 14? 14 year old. So I'd come over three weeks with my mum and dad or with my mum at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing happened. Did really well. And yeah. They promised the world. Jim Jeffries, the first team manager, came in because he'd seen me training and playing. and Exact yeah. same thing. Promised the world and then disappeared off the face of the earth. So first so, tail there then. A first kind of tail there then, which, which we pick up on quite a lot, is you've had to learn some, some strong mentality skills early on at 14 and, yeah. and probably learn early on what football is about is that you have these setbacks, yeah. don't you? You know, and, and well, unfortunately, like, it's it is the hardest part. It's yeah. Uh, I had a conversation the other day with uh, David Edgar regarding this. Is the hardest yeah. part about being a professional footballer is the mentality, is the side of getting knocked back when you achieve, not going too far with it, and and learning how to to stay level about everything, whether it's good or bad. And I think that yeah. was my first taste of it. Was because before that. Growing up, I was kind of untouchable. I was I was really really good at my age. Yeah, yeah. Over in Canada, and I was playing for the national team under 17s. I was playing for the provincial yeah. team. Like you know, the system over in Canada a little bit with being at TFC. This yeah. was pr- this was pre MLS. So yeah, yeah. I was so there was as nothing. At, yeah, I was as at higher level as I could possibly get to without going to university or going pro. Yeah. So getting knocked back was it was soul destroying at the time, but it made me learn a lot really quickly and at yeah. such a young age, like you said, is it was kind of a blessing because I grew yeah. into not letting that bother me anymore. So you ended up at Trammy. Yeah, it was uh yeah. so I come over with a a guy who runs a, a football club over in Canada, Oakville Blue Devils now, uh Duncan Wilde. He used to run a like a select camp and they'd come over every year. Yeah, and it was under 18s, and I was literally just 15. Right. And he'd he'd asked me to to come over, so yeah. we we came over for I think it was 10 days, and we stayed in Bolton, and he, he used to be at Man United through the youth system and that. So yeah, we we trained at the Cliff, and he he brought us around, and we played against England schoolboys, played against Everton, and then right. we played against Tranmere, and I did really yeah, well yeah. in all three games. Yeah, but the the Everton scout was like always oh, a little bit too small. Yeah, and bearing in mind, like let's be honest, they had a uh, Wayne Rooney who was two years younger than me that yeah, was already yeah, coming yeah. through the system. So they're like, yeah. "Well, we don't have to take a risk on anybody." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, it, it was one of those. It was disappointment because of Premier League team, but then we played Tranmere, and it did really well in the game and. The coach came up and says, "Oh, I like that kid up front, but like he's a little bit older, eight, under eighteen, so he's seventeen already, and I'd be yeah. halfway through my YTS." And Duncan's like, "No, well, he's he's fifteen. Yeah. And then he the the scout goes, "Well, yeah, but he needs to get a work permit, and he'll struggle at Tranmere." And I said, "No, he's yeah. got his passport." So all of a sudden, yeah, the, the alarm bells Mine's ring, and finished. before. Yeah. We, well, that was it. Before we'd even got back to Canada, they'd called my parents to right. say they wanted me over on trial. And yeah, so they they brought me over, and that was it. I went on a tour. We went on a tournament in France. The old drive down on the old minibuses. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, drove yeah. down to just north of Paris and played a tournament, and I did really well with the under 18s. Yeah, yeah. And scored in the final. We end up winning the tournament, and they just called back to John Aldridge, who was the manager at the time, and, and said, listen, yeah. we need to sign him up. So your 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 pathway and your journey there, because certainly mine, when I went into the youth system at, at Stockport, I didn't have any sort of academy or anything until I got into into Stockport. But, you know, we used to have some great battles at youth team level, mm-hmm. Tranmere and Stockport, even when we went into first team level. Yeah. And I always used to remember coming over and playing news, and it was like, used to kick you know kick each other to death and, and that that would football them but you know what what gets me about that side of it is then what was it like moving from Canada to, to obviously the Wirral side of it and then doing your YTS because back then you didn't get anything you didn't you know you'd be lucky if you got a decent meal after training you were cleaning <laughs> boots you, you know you it was 
how, how, how were you feeling about that? Was it, how were you feeling mentally? Well, that was, it was like, like I said about the Canadian setup was we had to take the risk. It was either yeah. wait until you're 18 and finish high school and go to university. Yeah. Or if you get the opportunity at 14, 15, 16 to go pro, you, you take it. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, that was it. it was, I didn't know any better. I didn't know what to expect, what to wish for, or anything. It was, I was going pro. So that yeah. was my thought. I'm, I'm moving from Canada to England to play professional football. And there was no, oh, well, I want this for breakfast. I want this for, it wasn't that. It was, I moved into digs. I, there was no standard to, to live up to. It was a matter of yeah. moving into a house with second year YTs and first year pros and that. And just get yeah. on with it, and I, I just kind of it, it was tough. Fifteen years yeah. old, moving away from your parents, but it was a risk at the time that had to be made if you wanted to go pro, unless you wanted to wait. Yeah, and wishful thinking that you'd you'd get the opportunity later down the line. So it was, I just kind of took it in my stride, and we had a really good youth system at Tramier at the time. Yeah. I think out of my my two years that I was involved with the YTS, I think we had something like 10 players moved on to first team football. So yeah, yeah. it yeah. was a, it was a regular. It was, re- it was, a, it was, a, I always remember the teams um, back there, you team wise, certainly you guys, we had probably four or five that went on to, to make it pro. And um, we used to play Man City a lot, which was the year of Sean Wright Phillips and all that lot as well. Leon, so, Leon Mike. Leon Mike. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, Terry, Terry was Dunfield it? was there at the time. And, Terry Dunfield, yeah. Um, so, and then we had Preston as well. So Preston yeah. were incredible at the time. Yeah. So uh, again, that that kind of journey. I mean, looking at your, your your kind of journey into the first team, yours is. Would you say you still have to 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 work for it in terms of um, once you got there? We, did you? Because I, I remember you breaking onto the scene, and I thought you were outstanding when you broke onto the scene, and. Again, similar to me in terms of size and stature, when I made my debut in Championship, I were eight and a half stone, and probably after that, I only put <laughs> two stone on. <laughs> yeah. So, for all those kids out there, you don't have to be the biggest. I learnt the game a different way by watching, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I knew that my size and my strength wasn't going to be a, a big part of what I'm doing. So, I had to learn the game a different way. You know, how did you learn the game and get into the, the kind of first team that way? I got lumps kicked out of me, to be honest. Yeah. I, like, breaking through, I remember clear as day, like, my first year, I, I'd broken into the under-18s, and we played Wigan away, and he brought, John McMahon was the coach, uh, Steve McMahon's brother. Yeah. He was our youth team coach, and he brought me on. And he's like, go on, just go and work hard. And first tackle comes in, that jumped out the way. And he grabbed me, like, I'd literally been on a minute. Yeah. And... He grabbed me and goes, don't ever do that again. Yeah. So I went into the next one, ended up doing my ankle. <laughs> so it was a matter of learn the hard way. I was I was quick. I was yeah. skillful. I was direct. But I did not know the physical side of the game. And um, I soon learned it. And I, I developed my game around that because, yeah. you, you know, yourself, I don't like pulling out of tackles and challenges. And, no, no. And yeah. I had to learn the hard way because that was we we weren't in academies, we were yeah. in youth we were in the youth alliance, so we were in yeah, yeah. not even like scholarship a, a, apprenticeship programs. We weren't through gifting yeah. players these contracts on massive monies. We were on yeah. players who pretty much lived off their wages and their Christmas bonuses from players. Yeah, and yeah. we, I think we were given a a proper apprenticeship and we had to learn the hard way. And yeah. I think that's where the game's evolved a lot now is every player under the sun can do every trick under the sun. Yeah. But the basics of their game are waning a little bit. And I think that's where we, yeah, yourself, including myself, yeah, your, your basics, your first touch, your reading yeah. of the game will be a lot better than your tricks. Yeah. Okay, you may have a few tricks yeah. here and there, but I remember you, yeah. direct left winger, out your feet, yeah. your cross gets in the box, Deliver, somebody's yeah. on the end of it. Yeah. But you worked yeah. on that. You didn't work yeah. on 18 crossovers and a drag step over and a round-the-world <laughs> trick and then, 
you didn't do that. I do now, but... <laughs> oh, you do that. You do that for yeah, the yeah. videos I've been watching. Like. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that, yeah. wasn't, that wasn't part of your game. It was never no. part of my game. Mine is no. get your half yard, get your shot off, hit the target. So these are the things yeah. we had to work on our fundamentals before we did the flair. And if yeah. you added a bit of flair here and there, that was it. But your fundamentals yeah. were sound. Yeah. And the ones who did that little bit extra with those fundamentals ended up going into first team football. Yeah. And that yeah. was, uh, that was how our games. And at, at that time, showing yeah. our age back when it was black and white and VHS and all that, yeah. we, <laughs> that's how we, yeah. we developed our games and that's how we progressed. Yeah. So just, just on that side of it, obviously there's a lot of people commenting. So if people do want to ask, Serious questions other than are you going back to the Indian Super League? <laughs> 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 um, certainly the, the ones in the UK feel feel free to. But, you know, again, I, I, what, what's great about that for me is that, that, you know, your mentality at a young age, you've had to build that. And it was the same with me, you had to build that. And certainly um, I, what I feel nowadays is the game's become a lot more technical. <laughs> but what people don't recognise is to actually get into a first team um, scenario, you have to understand the game. Mm -hmm. And to understand the game, you have to play it. So, you know, certainly I've been, I know you're on the coaching, on the coaching ladder now, but I've watched a lot of games kind of um, at youth team level now, and it's very tippy tappy stuff. Certainly when you got into the first team at Tranmere, right? If you were doing tippy tappy stuff in the, in the youth team, what would your experience have been like in the in the first team then? Because playing in a championship, what was it like back then? Oh, well, I remember... See, I don't remember much of my debut. So I was 16 when I made my debut. And I don't remember much of it, yeah. but I remember my second game. My second game was at Main Road. Um, yeah. I came on right wing and I went to go past Danny Tiato and he put me yeah. in Rose Ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. That was his style. And that was first team football. That was... Yeah. It, it, it's strange, and I'm sure you'll you'll agree with me. You look at football now, and you go to watch first team football throughout the leagues. Yeah, and the average age of players is so much younger, and they look it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you go and watch a 22 year old player; he looks about 20, 18. Yeah, yeah. Even your 27, 28 year old players look 21, 22. Yeah. Back then, it was I was in a team of men. Yeah. Like I, you literally go on and everybody's got full beards and yeah. big build, six foot. You were the same as me, one. mate. Them shirts. Yeah. Were... <laughs> oh, one size fits all. Like, because I think they had Patrick back then as well, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like my first ever jersey was a Patrick. Yeah, and it was horrible. But yeah, every like I went into this and I was a boy. I was sixteen year old, yeah. and everybody in the team was in in and around thirty. Yeah. And every team you played against was like playing up against a team of men. Yeah, and it was, yeah. It, you had to learn. You had to learn the hard way and you had to learn how to be efficient rather than being flamboyant. And I think that there, what you just said, uh, you know, a lot of the kids that are listening and even if there's any players listening, I, I think what, what's gone out of the game now is probably being direct. Certainly you were well known for being direct. I was well known for being direct. And I, I, I don't see that enough anymore. You know, players taking the bull by the horns and going, do you know what? Because I think I feel there's a sense in football now of people, well, if, if, if I go at him, I'll lose the ball. Or, mm -hmm. you know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that's, it's watching every team is, it's like carbon copies, unfortunately. Yeah. And, hey, it works yeah. for some teams. But there's some teams you yeah. go and watch and they'll keep the ball, they'll they'll have 80% possession and two shots on goal. Yeah. But you see how much Liverpool's been ridiculed this year. Yeah. Because they've had some of those long balls. Oh, they the mm. most direct team we've played this year. Yeah, but they scored five goals. Yeah. They had 80% possession and played a couple long balls, went in behind and scored. Yeah, yeah. Knowing your yeah. strengths and being efficient and if a team's holding a high line, learning that getting in behind them, turning yeah. them round is going to be their weakness. Yeah. They, Liverpool, for me, okay, it's easy for me being a Liverpool fan. I know you're not going to like that, but <laughs> Can't watching it. them this year, it's a breath of fresh air because yeah. they are doing the way, they are playing the way they played the last couple of years, but this year they've added that 
that little bit of directness into their game. Yeah. But it's not just hoof ball. It's yeah. I'm playing that diagonal in behind. I'm yeah, playing that. Yeah. I, I know Robertson's overlapping. I know Mane's pulled off. I'm yeah. P- putting that ball in behind. They're playing to their strengths and they're they're doing it well. They're doing yeah. it calculated. Yeah. Whereas you get a lot of teams are trying to be Barcelona. They're trying to be like you. You've always had crew do it, but now you're getting every yeah. team trying to do it and play yeah. it around the back and play slow football and let's wait for let's wait for an opening. But if a team's sitting there and they're like, well, they're just going to pass around the back. Let's just sit. Yeah. And it ends yeah. up being the worst game of table tennis you've ever seen. Yeah. And it's – there's very few teams at the minute, like you said, that are – Direct. Really, really Even direct. United, like you look, United used to be one of the most direct teams in the world. And mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, everyone now wants to, like you say, play like Barca or, or Man City. Um, but if you haven't got those players, how can you do that? Well, I think that the way the way that everyone's getting brought up, this is probably taking it back to the academy setup now. Mm-hmm. Is a, a lot of academy setups now want to, you know, they feel the best way to educate a player is is to teach them how to play out from the back. And the minute they get to the first team, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. We don't play out from the back here. You know, we we want to we want to keep it tight, score goals in the right way. So. Um, just, just what we'll do is two or three minutes. If anyone wants to ask any questions on um, how you get through from the academy into the professional level, feel free to do that. Um, but then we will take it on now to your professional uh, career, and, and you know, certainly I think it's been an outstanding one. So you're at Tranmere, um, and you get, you know, you get a big move. What, what are your thoughts on that? How does that come about for people and? Well, it was. It took time. Like there was a, a couple of years beforehand, before I moved to Leicester, that there was interest from from teams because I obviously being a young player, playing week in week yeah. out, you do get noticed. And when you do get a yeah. seventeen, eighteen, nineteen year old player who is playing thirty, forty games a season, they're there for a reason. So obviously the scouts start coming out. Yeah. And I was close to going to Preston a couple of times previously, and it never ever yeah. materialised and. Then Leicester came in. It was they'd sold uh, David Connolly to to Wigan, and yeah. they seen me as a kind of direct replacement because I was young. I was still um, needing to mature, but I was still playing games constantly. So they knew first team football wasn't too far fetched for me. Yeah, and they were clearing decks. They were they were taking. Uh, cutting back their wage bill because obviously dropping yeah. from the Prem, the parachute payments were going soon and yeah. they needed a young outlook on the on the squad and bringing me in, adding to players that they brought in over the last, what, six to eight months with Craig Levine. Yeah. It was it was just one of those. It, it just was it Craig nowhere, Levine who much. signed you? Yeah. So it was uh, kind of going was to it? play for one of my heroes when I was growing up because he was... He was a oh, yeah. leader, he was leader a heart. at heart. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, leader at heart yeah. and captain and absolute legend for us. And yeah, uh, little did I know it ended up being going the way it did with him. Um, he was a little bit yeah. of a his way or the highway sort of thing, and right. we didn't always see eye to eye. And he acted a bit petulant sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but. It was it was a great move for me at the time because obviously them rebuilding, me trying to get to that next step. Yeah. And the size of the club, new stadium they'd been in for what two yeah. years and it was um just a massive move and going there and yeah. just buzzed off it every week and like you when you joined on loan it was the same thing. It was we had a oh, really well, young team. We, we had a great yeah, great I mean, dressing room. I remember I'm a, yeah, great dressing room. I I remember um, turning up and it was like it was obviously yourself, Matty Fryer, all these players that you kind of grow up playing against. It was like they'd just gone, yeah, I go and play for Leicester. But it was a difficult yeah. time because the club didn't have the finances what it what it's got now. And I, what, yeah. what I certainly felt when I turned up was that um, well, I think I, well I came from Sunderland at the time, didn't I? So. For me, I was having a good season in the Premier League, and Mick McCarthy says go and get some games, and and it was like 
I, I loved every minute of it at Leicester. To be honest, I, 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 there was a talk of me coming back in the summer. It never happened. And then yeah. signed a new deal at Sunderland and then I did come back. But it was kind of, you could tell the club was struggling. Um, yeah. Because there was just something underlying why it didn't kick on even at that time. I know there wasn't a lot of money at the time, but the players that you you know that were there, um, you know, you look at Matty Fryer, you look at yourself, goals, you look at um, who did Williams in the midfield, you know, yeah, very yeah, good Gaz players. Williams, there was yeah. a lot of good... Gaz Williams, there was uh, Shugsy, um, fantastic player as well. Um, well you look at it, Richard a lot Stearman, of very good talent there. Richard Stearman there as Stacey, well. Stacey, yeah, coming through, Andy King. Um, Paddy Casnobo, Patrick McCarthy. Yeah. We we yeah. had a proper squad. Like, we had a squad of players who who went on to do great things in the game. And whether it was a yeah. little bit too early to have them us all together at once. Yeah. I think that's... I think that ends up being what it turned out to be. Like, Paddy Casnobo went on to Leeds and he was a legend there and obviously went back yeah. to, to Australia. And Paddy McCarthy went yeah. on to, to Palace and did so well at Palace and... Mm. you see the success that happened outside, whether whether it was who was putting us together, who was who was coaching us at the time, or what, you, it's hard yeah. to put a finger on it, but yeah. we had, on paper, we had a great team, and obviously, as the years went on, we ended up getting relegated, but um, yeah. we had the making of something special there, but yeah. it just, for some reason or another, like you said, there was something underlying, whether it was a, a loser mentality, from dropping yeah. down from the prem and then not going straight back up, yeah, or or at least competing. So I think going yeah. from dropping from the prem to to lower to bottom half of the table was was a massive massive one for the club, and I, I don't think yeah. they ever fully recovered until they got relegated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would so obviously. Do you feel part of getting relegated makes you stronger as a player? Because I mean, I, you know, no bones about it. I've been relegated in my career as well. It's it's, it's disgusting. <laughs> Too many times. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. But you know, um, how do you feel about that? Um, with the Leicester one, I, that was probably the hardest one to take. Yeah. Um, I think more so because I didn't stay on after the relegation. Yeah. And I'd I'd, I'd enjoyed three years there and top score. Yeah. For the three years and with three goals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not as many goals as it should have been. But... No, I'm joking. No, no, but you always I... get that, don't you? I was top scorer that season. You only got yeah. four. <laughs> yeah, but that was it. Like it was, I'd done so well for three years, and then to to get relegated. Yeah, and then find out they tried to sell me, and they wanted to. They were looking to sell me, and different things popped up, and I think it was. It was an untenable situation. I had to, yeah. I had to move on, and um, then to see a little bit of a mistake on my point. If I, when I look at it in the long term, is how the club jumped back. Yeah. But then you have uh, you have Nigel Pearson coming out and saying, "Oh, I gave everybody an opportunity to stay who was here that left." So me, Gaz McCauley, uh, Richard yeah. Stearman all left, and I'm like. I never met him. I was gone before yeah. he got the job. So to I mean, say you've, that you've, publicly, you've mentioned another me- you've mentioned another player there in uh, Gaz McCauley. You think of that that team? It's it's incredible when you look back at it. Gaz yeah. McCauley's gone on to play however many times for West Brom in the Premier League, um, yeah. and however many times for Northern Ireland. It's incredible, really. So um, it's, it's crazy. What, and like what, we we signed him from Lincoln, so he was literally yeah. started his ascendancy in his career by coming to us. Yeah, and definitely. Then he goes on to captain Ipswich and then he get, obviously gets a move to West Brom, plays, what, 250-odd yeah. Premier League games. Like it's yeah. After 30 yeah. years old. Yeah. Like that That was so, incredible. I know that Monty wants us to take one of his questions regarding the, the Indian uh, Super League, but We'll get on to that later. We're just telling a little bit of a story, so calm yourself down, Monty. We'll we'll, we'll get on to it soon. Um, so then you moved you moved on, didn't you, from Leicester? Um, was it Barnsley you went to then? Yeah, Barnsley. moved up to yeah, moved up there, and yeah, they they 
they looked after me. Um, yeah. It was kind of a... We had that series a move that I you wasn't, there as well, didn't you? Yeah. Well, it was kind of a move I wasn't... I wasn't trying to get out of Leicester. Yeah. So I try, kind, we kind of tried to price Barnsley out of the contract. Yeah. And they, they just accepted. So it was kind of a... Like, listen, they, they're in the championship. Okay, yeah. club size-wise, it might have been a yeah. step back. Yeah. But I never knew what was going to go on with, with Leicester. I didn't know they were getting taken over. They were going to get funds thrown at them here and there and everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. So moving moving there was the right move for me. It was staying in the championship where I, I wanted to be. And yeah. Who was to know that after, what, 14 games, what was going to happen and scored on my debut, sent off on my home debut. Like, it was a kind yeah. of a bittersweet first week of the season. Yeah. Um, but then started getting into it again after my, my suspension. I was only out for a game. Yeah. Um, and then I came back and then I ended up fracturing my skull. And yeah. It it was... Listen, you can't warrant for anything after that. You can't warrant for the situation after that because it was yeah. unheard of and not many players in all of English football had gone through that injury. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a tough one to take, but that was we're having the So just just so just so people understand, you, you went you challenged for a was it for a header or and did he no, was through the back challenge of you? it was he's looked over his shoulder, elbowed me, yeah. headed the ball without jumping. Like it wasn't yeah, that we yeah. were up in the air and his arms were up. But that, was, I mean, he, seen... for, for me, whether I should say this or not, he was always that type of player, Morgan, wasn't he? Oh. What well, one day he was going to yeah. hurt someone seriously, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, it was. Listen, he was always that type of player. He was always a hard yeah. centre half. So you would have played against him in reserve football, same as I. Yeah. Did. He was always yeah. the same, but he's never meant. He's meant to hurt me, but he's not meant to do the extent that he did yes yeah. I'll be honest about it people don't like me saying it because it was vicious it was unwarranted it was part of the game he said which happened all the time which it did when you jump you catch yeah. people with a forearm whatever it does happen yeah but yeah elbowing somebody flat-footed not having to jump and use your arms yeah. it's it's not part of the game so yeah let's leave it at that he he meant to hurt me he didn't mean to do it to the extent he did but yeah it is what it is it was for me, it wasn't the worst thing that's happened to me in my career was snapping my cruise ship. So yeah, that I was back running a month and a half after. I was back with the club three months after. I was back training four months, yeah. four and a half months after. So, so we got a, we've got a question here for you, just regarding your injury from Ramsey. Okay. Says how did how did uh, the injury affect you? As he had the same injury two weeks and the uh, same injury two weeks before yours and he never really recovered? Um, physically, it was it was what it was. You just followed protocol. So you were yeah. told to do this, you were told to do that. And mentally, it wasn't funny enough. It didn't bother me. It was... Going back had the right to when you're coming me. over, though, mentally, you, you build yeah, up but... that mental strength. So probably that's helped you. Yeah, and I've I've been asked questions about like comparisons with uh, Mason, who did his. Um, yeah, not saying his wasn't worse or mine was worse or whatever because I don't know, but there's different yeah. upbringings and different backgrounds and different parachutes, if you know what I mean. Like, I came over without education. Yeah, I was listen. I'm a footballer. That's it. That's all I know. That's all I can achieve. Yeah. Because I yeah. don't have the education. Yeah. He might he might have the education. He definitely has the bigger parachute to drop back on with Spurs looking after him. Yeah. Financially made a damn sight more money. Yeah. Me, I had no idea of what could be next. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't know So well, quitting wasn't okay, an well, option for you. No. And it, it never has been and like I couldn't say, well, okay, Barnsley are going to give me a job for life. Yeah. Take over an academy, do this, do that. Here's yeah. X amount a week for the next 10 years, whatever. Insurance yeah, policies. Yeah. His insurance might have yeah. paid out millions. Yeah. 
like the, the different scenarios. Use so on the old I've CICA been... insurance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got fifty fifty pound for being in the hospital a day yeah. and all that. Back. So that like, see, that's the thing. Like, there there's different circumstances for why people, yeah, react and uh, get the after injuries. And for me, it was never in yeah. doubt. Like getting asked if I wanted to wear one of the the same head guards that Petr Cech wears or wore when he was playing, and it was a non-starter yeah. for me. It, if I can't get back yeah, to yeah. how I was, then there's no point getting back. Because yeah. could you imagine me playing football yeah. not being aggressive? You'd be like, nah. No, no, unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> but it's unbelievable mate. mental strength. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable mental strength to do that though, from the type of injury that you've had. Um, so you know, when you went on there, you, you know Barnsley, Preston, North End, um, a fantastic career. I'm not going to say anything about India because that's all I've had is questions on it. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got another yeah. question here. Did you always play as a striker, even as a child, or did did you experience other positions? Well, I think when I first met you, were a right <laughs> winger because we used to play on the same side, didn't we? Yeah, I was. I think because when I broke through, we had Alex Hay in the youth team yeah. uh, at Tranmere. So I was always, because I was smaller. Yeah. But like, same thing with first team football. When I, when I, when I was in Canada, it was always a striker. Always. Um, goal scorer, yeah. 30, 40 goals a season. Yeah. And then when I came over here, it was because I was that quick and I was good with left foot and right foot, I'd play either wing yeah. and I'd play up front. Yeah. Um, but when I broke yeah. into the first team, breaking into a first team with Wayne Allison, David Kelly, Scott Taylor, Andy Parkinson. Scott um, Taylor, yeah. Well, the, it was, listen, you play where you needed. Yeah. And if they you bring me on one. last 20 minutes as a right winger or a left winger or go yeah. up front and play off Chief, go off play, play off Wayne Allison, whatever. Yeah. That was that was what you did. Yeah. Um. So I have, I have done left wing, right wing, number 10, number 9. I'm a, I'm a number 9 for me. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm small, but like you like you know. Lead I'm, the line, well. I, I quite like going in behind. I quite like throwing myself about. and I'm a pain in the backside for people. And yeah. Although I'm answering the question, although I am a striker, I have witnessed and I have played in different positions and you just play where you need it and, and you do it to the best ability. And that... That's in, that's important. Is a you know we we get asked this question a lot the last couple of weeks. It's, it's important, I feel, that you, you you understand the game from different positions um, when you are a kid and even when you're coming through as well. And I think um, you have to be a student of the game on that side of it. I think nowadays kids, when they're playing, certainly at grassroots level, the pitching all in them already saying definitely a striker, mm -hmm. definitely a, yeah. a you know a a full back or what, but how can you learn the game if you don't experience other positions? And we did that at Stockport yeah. in the youth team. You know, we used well, to do it, it a like... lot against the weaker teams like Tranmere when we <laughs> when we used to play. Well, well, <laughs> well, like, that's it. Like, you you think about the, the players who, who came up through the youth systems that we played in. Yeah. And you think about that one centre-half who was probably short, stocky mm -hmm. and was a beast and you hated yeah. playing against them. But it comes. He breaks into the first team squad, and you've got two six foot three centre halves. Yeah. That 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 five foot ten centre half is now going to be a right back, or a left back. Yeah. Or yeah. a holding midfielder. Being yeah, versatile, yeah. it's prolonged so many players' careers. Yeah. When you are like you said, pigeonholed to one position, you're you're stuck because yeah. You you break into the first team. Say you're a left winger, you break into the first team, and somebody says, "Listen, Welshy." We have a left winger ahead of you. We need you to play left back. Yeah. Or we yeah. need you to play up front. And you don't know how to play that position. Or you're unwilling to play that position. Because that's the problem. A lot yeah. of players are unwilling to play in different positions yeah. because, no, this is me. Oh, no. Well, you could play 500 games as a left back because you've got a wand of a left foot. If you get taught the game yeah. properly, you've got that chance. Yeah. So there's. Versatility there's is important. Lot it's massive. It can be, be detrimental to a lot of people. And you, you do see that is because they're so versatile, they don't end up 
locking down one position. But if you're not yeah. that that one player who's going to say, well, listen, this left wing or right wing position is mine for the next yeah. 10 years, but you're in that squad for the next 10 years and you're playing in different positions, what would you rather do? Sit in the reserves yeah. and on the bench or play week exactly, in week yeah. out? And that, that's the, that's yeah. the thing that a lot of kids need to learn young and learn, yeah. like you said, be a student of the game, learn the game. Love it, yeah, definitely. Um, question here, um, I think it's from Spen. Have you seen or played against Morgan after the injury? And if so, as he spoke to you and apologised? Good question. Um, I got a after this after it all happened. I got a we had a preseason game the next summer, so I was out till the next preseason from November, and I came on against uh, Gainsborough Trinity. Yeah, and Shout first out touch to all of the, the ball, first, fans. Well, there you go. First, <laughs> first, first, first touch of the ball was a header. Yeah, and I get a text message through from him saying, "Good to see you back on the park. Hope you're all well. Hopefully, we can sit down and have a beer over this sometime." And that was the first contact I've had. And then Sky Sports, being Sky Sports, a year to the date. I think it was a year to the date plus one. So I think it was November 11th or something like that, or November 9th, either yeah. before or after. They organized Barnsley versus Chef United. So they knew what was going to happen, but it's a massive rivalry anyways, but he was suspended, I was injured. or Yeah, he was suspended, I was injured. Yeah. So they were gutted. Yeah. So yeah, Sky, yeah. obviously, they knew the... Yeah the circumstances and they were gutted that neither of us were available so when we yeah. played them at Bramall Lane it, the worst thing that happened like shake hands and I'd whatever Patrice ever sort of thing not shaking your hand just shook his hand whatever about 75 minutes 80 minutes in and I'm getting subbed off and this is the, the left a bit of a sour taste the rest of it was history is comes up yeah. and makes an effort to get in front of me and shake my hand and says, let's make it look good for the cameras. Right. And that, that was the, that was the one frustrating or more, not frustrating because I didn't really care, but it left a bit of a sour taste yeah. after that because it's like, it's not about the cameras to be honest. It was, no, no, first and foremost, could have been your life. Could have, could have, yeah. could have killed me. Yeah. I did recover. He never came up to the hospital, which if he would, I think things would have yeah. been a lot different and it wouldn't. But listen, I don't hold a grudge. I don't really care enough to hold a grudge. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was the only, that was the only contact and the only time he actually really spoke to me after that. So that's right. for me, it was, it was, it was what it was. I, he had no part of my life. I had no part of his, so it didn't really bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay, so moving it on then. Um, Preston North End, I remember playing against you season, you won the league with Donny. Um, I think we beat you, didn't we, with Carlisle just before you won the league on the Tuesday night um, at the Keep Moat. And then you went and won it on the Saturday, I think, at Brentford. We beat you 2-0 at the Keep Moat. You were flying. But that meant we stayed yeah. up. Right. Um and uh, you went like from Donny, yeah, you went Donny, um, Fleetwood. So obviously a lot of experience in England. But moving on to India, how did the Indian Super League come about then? Were you Monty? Were you? Was... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a. Uh, it came out of nowhere, to be honest. It was when Leicester got promoted. Um, yeah. So I was literally the first time in my career out of contract. Right. So I was I was coming up thirty year old and or I just, yeah I was just coming up thirty year old and I was out of contract for the first time and yeah. Leicester had been promoted and um, I don't know if you know Andy May does did some stuff for being sports and BT Sports and that uh, yeah he's a reporter yeah so he was doing a bit for TSN right so just a freelance bit for TSN in Canada regarding Leicester City. So I was thinking, yeah. well, no better person to speak to than the Canadian who's played for them. Yeah, yeah. So he he travelled over and visited me over here and um, 
we just did a just a general chat about Leicester and how we thought they'd get on. And he, at the end of it all, he just goes, "Have you been approached or mentioned about this new Indian Super League starting up?" And me, none the wiser, is like, "No, nah, I haven't heard of it." <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So he goes, well, here, contact this guy. He goes, they wanted me to go out there and do some media work, but I'm obviously, I'm contracted here now, so I can't do it. So he passed me yeah. the guy's number, and I, I go home, speak to my wife and my agent, and we just said, well, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. So my agent, my agent sent out a letter or sent out a text and a phone call to them, and they're like, we'd love him. We haven't got a Canadian involved in the the league, and. He's an international and obviously played in the championship. Yeah, three hundred odd, three hundred odd games, three hundred fifty yeah. odd games in the championship. So like, yeah, yeah, get him in. How old would so you have been uh, at this time? I think it was thirty. So I, I think yeah. I was just either just coming up thirty or I'd just gone thirty. Yeah. Um, so it was a matter of after promises of Donny giving me a two-year contract, then taking it away. What about TFC? Do you never get an opportunity to go to Toronto? Never. I wanted to. Yeah. I, wanted I always to, remember, um... I always remember, my missus just sat here watching television now, um, but I always remember we, we went to Miami on a weekend break uh, in season and we came to watch you at um, the Canada, didn't we? Um, in Miami. Yeah, who, you were in, sta- in the stands because of a few of our few of our teammates, yeah. Was it the Orange Bowl? I think it was it the Orange Bowl. Yeah, it? it was the the Orange Bowl in Fort Lauderdale, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd... Because yeah. uh, I Gold always Cup thought that would be a, 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 your next move, you know, getting into TFC, but it just never came about. My, never any interest, mate. Like, I, I'd always made myself... Yeah. When, and especially when I was out of contract at 29-year-old, in my prime. Yeah. Yeah. I thought perfect opportunity and I'd have loved to have played back there um, yeah which is bizarre they were, isn't it? you'd have thought you'd have bit your hand off for a Canadian yeah well they, they did everything in their power to bring in American players and um, foreign players and never yeah. very few Canadian players got brought back very very few yeah you had a couple come through the academies and but very very few um, I'd say you'd probably list and one hand, the amount of players who came back that were Canadian. Yeah, which is it. It, right. it was frustrating because playing back in in Canada would have been would have been perfect, and I think it would have been a great yeah great chance for me to possibly stay in the the national setup a little bit longer. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but that was it. Yeah, the Indian so, the Indian one was was just madness. Uh, my name got put in a hat, and I got put in a draft. And I didn't know where I didn't know where I was going, who I was going to be playing yeah. with, what part of the country. And so who was your first I team was, you went was, to there? Uh, Kerala Blasters. Right. So I got drafted by them. David James was the player coach. Was it? Uh, yeah, Michael Chopper was the first draft uh, pick. Right. So because of his Indian heritage and all that, they they brought Chops in as yeah. one of the kind of the marquee signings of foreign players. Um, yeah, and then you know, so Jamie, did Jamie McAllister for left. Season? Um, brilliant. Um, we we were under we were the massive underdogs. We were probably joint favorite to finish bottom. Um, we made right. the final. Right. So we lost in the final, ninety fifth minute, one nil. Right. So it was. Uh, I did really well the first season. Scored five. Uh, yeah. Got player of the season for the league and just went on from there. And yeah. they messed me around a little bit after the first season. Peter Taylor came in, um, yeah. decided he knew best. Yeah. Um, contract offer that was on the table for me got swept. And I ended up joining the team uh, that won the league the, the first season. So I went to Calcutta, who Did were. You know, right? It was brilliant. Um, loved it in Kerala. Kerala fans were mental. The 50,000 yeah. 50, fans a, a game and all that, all wearing yeah, yeah. yellow. and They yeah. were class. But again, Peter Taylor came in and yeah. just decided that he 
wanted to make his own team and he's going to make a team that's better than the one before and yeah he ended up breaking up the whole squad who yeah was a, it was the squad that got us to the final it wasn't uh, just certain players so we'll, we'll take question, we'll take questions now from any of the Indian yeah. Super League fans because um, you know I know they've been waiting a long time so we'll just like, if you've got any questions yeah if you've got any questions for Ian just, just put them on here now but certainly I mean I know a few people that went out there Mickey Collins went out there yourself Wes Brown went out there um, it must be a good experience yeah Wes is it, yeah you know, it must Wes be a good experience. And, yeah, it is. It's it's different. Like it was literally just as an, the first the first one was literally as an adventure. It was just something different. Just yeah. sick of the politics and getting offers and offers taken away and this and that. And yeah, it wasn't fin- It wasn't financial. The yeah, first, yeah, the first season definitely wasn't financial. Um, but as I started doing better, they started get the contracts started getting better and um. Oh, I was never in my life expecting to to play five seasons out there, but mm. lo and behold, we've got we've got a question here. Which team did you enjoy the most in the ISL? Um, it's that's Monty finally getting his answer. It, it, yeah. it's a hard one. That it's a hard one that um, I really enjoyed playing for for Kerala um, with the fan base they had, but I also won the league with Calcutta, the team that Mon- that Monty supports. So. Yeah, my two best seasons were with ATK with Calcutta. Um, yeah, but again, the fan base in Kerala Blasters is incredible. So I was I was very fortunate to play for probably the two best supported teams in India. Yeah, um, another one. Your perspective on the Indian Super League? Is there any room for improvement with the league? A hundred percent. It's come on so far from. The first season to the sixth, the sixth season just finished now. It's come on so far, but it's still a baby. It's yeah. You think about the English leagues and the the European leagues; they've been together for hundreds of a hundred years. Yeah, yeah. It's taken this long to get to where they are. Yeah, and it's the old it's the old cliche, isn't it? Rome wasn't built in a day. India's yeah. got so much potential. They've got a one point three, one point four billion people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the second sport. So it's always going to be behind cricket. Yeah. So the infrastructure needs to build. They need their own stadiums, need their own training facilities, this and that. So there's so much needs worked on, but the progression yeah. over the last six years has been brilliant. Um, is there an academy structure under 18s, et cetera, out there in India? Over the last two seasons, yes. They've started that. Um, a lot of clubs are investing in that. Yeah, um, but they do tend to do it for their local players. So, hence Kerala Blasters will have players from Kerala, Calcutta will be from Calcutta, so on and so forth. But they've started yeah. it. They need. They really need to start out a league where the club, or even a reserve league as well, um, where the reserves kind of travel with the first team in, like the way they used like to do. Like the MLS. It. Yeah. So yeah. you you play one day, the reserves play the next day, so on and so forth. But yeah, again, they're a baby. They've got to learn. They've got to learn from mistakes, and they've got to learn yeah. from what's worked well in other countries, and not just try and be yeah. narrow-minded to well, this is how we want to do it. But what if that's not successful? Yeah. Follow the tracks that have been laid out over the years in different countries, and take the best and yeah. the easiest bits from them, and go from there. So, um, you're on your coaching journey now, aren't you? Um, yeah, well, coaching. not started, but but um, I've done my badges. So, is, um, are you finished playing le- now, or are you still looking to play? I was looking this season past, but now, 36-year-old, I've been out of it for a year. I can yeah. almost certainly say I'm retired. Um, I haven't 100% done that or yeah. decided that, but 99% I'm retired just coming yeah. back at 36 when you've been out of it for years, near impossible. Um, but I've done... Well, I kind of did that and then I came finished. back and... I did that and then I came well, back it. as player assistant coach and then player manager. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. Like, that's that's something... I'm, I'm not going to stop playing. 
yeah at the level that I'm at or I've been at then yeah, yeah pretty sure I'm stopped um yeah but like my coaching I did I did my level 2 before I left when I was at Fleetwood so I yeah. finished that I just finished my I last summer I did my B license I I finished that in January yeah um I then transferred to the equivalent of that with the Canadian FA so I've got yeah. the Canadian B license and the UA for B license yeah, I want a bit of experience before I jump. I, I, yeah, I yeah. could have jumped on my. Totally agree summer. with you. Totally like agree. So with you. I, I did how, how, I and did how that. many players have you seen? How many players have you seen go straight into coaching and like, oh, I can do this, and then yeah. they end up taking a massive back step yeah. because they realise well, they're not ready. Well, exactly, and I think you do right because what what I ended up doing was I did my B license and then had a few years coaching then became a manager and had two years as a manager. I had to, basically, I, t- I took on a team that was in the relegation zone. You either get a job if a manager moves on or if, if a club's struggling. So yeah. I got that job and then the following season I had to build a club up basically from nothing. And it was a great experience. You're having to work with budgets of, you know, not yeah. a lot of money. Players that have to come and, um, you know, after a day's work and things like that. So I've now... Um, finished that role there, I resigned last November, but I'm now on my A licence. And it's fantastic. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it, but I'm I'm doing it in my own time rather than having to rush with it. So that would be my yeah. biggest advice on that is get your experience like the football side of it. You've got to do the hard yards on that side of it. Like that's that's what I'm planning on doing and um I've pretty much got a the plan and the path where I want to go down. Um yeah. I want to just learn. I want to. I want to be able to put on like twenty years, twenty well, twenty plus years in professional. And okay, I can be involved in any training session you put in front of me. Doesn't mean I know yeah. how to run that session. Doesn't mean I know how to do it from the other yeah, side. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And the time, yeah. like the basic, the timings, the the measurements, like yeah. little things, little minute things that you think yeah. about, like yeah. the measurements of a session. Yeah. The timings of a session, the rest periods of a session, how to yeah. transfer part A of the session into part B and part C and part D and so on and so forth. Yeah. So this is the thing I'm trying to learn now. And yeah. I want to be able to go in and when I'm ready to go, like doing my B license and my, my level two and having to put on sessions where you got to do the progressions in yeah. your assessment. I didn't yeah. quite get the grips of it, so I passed. So I passed, especially the B license was a was a tougher one because given the the certain time yeah. period that you had to get three different sessions across within twenty five minutes, you're like, oh yeah. crap! Like, okay, gotta yeah. set this up, gotta set. So having to learn that yeah. and how to to do it seamlessly is where I'm yeah. still learning. I passed it. Yeah, could have been a lot better, and I know that. So trying to learn that and trying to develop that side of my coaching strategies yeah. and my, my and it philosophy. It's going to yeah. take time. and I know that, but so, that's why I don't want to jump straight in. So just on that side of it, you, you're going to, you'll be heading into the Indian Super League as a manager soon. And that's what everyone wants. To know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's if I become a manager and I become good enough. Yeah. And I think I'm good enough. Then, yeah. By all means, we'll see where that takes us. Is it could be any level, yeah. but until I know I'm good enough, until I know enough about the, that yeah. part of the game, I can't say yes or no to anything. I can't say I'm going to manage. I might not no, be absolutely. suited for a manager. I might yeah. not be suited to be a coach. If I'm not suited to be a coach, yeah, I could still then be a manager. So you do your groundwork. Are, yeah, That's and it. I'm I'm trying to do the hard jobs so, first and learn my. It's like yeah. restarting my apprenticeship. Yeah, exactly, mate. Listen, we've literally got about 30 seconds left on the video. Um, you've been amazing, <laughs> mate. No, it's been a great story. It's been good catching up with you as well. Um, so hopefully yeah, all, everybody's enjoyed it. I know there's been quite a few of our academy kids and parents listening. Um, you know, last little bit as a youngster, you've got to work hard that's it mate and I appreciate all your your, your words and that stay safe and we'll uh, keep in touch
All right. No, keep. I, I keep. I'm gonna enjoy watching your lives and.